every man in the history of mankind who's had a wife knows when you've messed up and you have something bad to tell your wife, you don't wait for the right time. You do it now because she always knows before you get around to telling her. The queen, for her part, felt some plot afoot quite soon, for who deceives a woman in love? She caught wind of a change. Maybe it's the sight of men loading grain on the ships down at the harbor? There's a thought. Uh, she's being in fear of what had seemed her safety, evil rumor, shameless as before, brought word to her in her distracted state, of ships being rigged and trim for sailing. Furious, at her wit's end, she traversed the whole city, all aflame with rage, like a bacante driven wild by emblems shaken when the mountain revels of the odd year possess her. She finds Aeneas, she's rushing through the city looking for him, and she's in a towering rage, driven by fear that this man that she's in love with, that she thought was hers forever, is about to sail away, secretly, without telling her. It'd be one thing if he'd come and said, hey, Dido, we're going to go on a trip. But instead, she looks out her window one day, or hears a rumor that the ships are being loaded, and she hadn't been told. This is a bad sign. You even hope to keep me in the dark as to this outrage, did you, two-faced man, and slip away in silence? Can our love not hold you? Can the pledge we gave not hold you? Can Dido not now sure can Dido not hold you now sure to die in pain? Look at that. Can the pledge we gave not hold you? And she goes on railing at Aeneas, and he sits there listening, and he's kind of ashen-faced. He knows he screwed up. He doesn't know what to do. Uh, she's right. He was going to sail away secretly, but she found out and accosted him before he could go to her and say, you know, Dido, I have something to say. Second mistake. The first mistake was getting involved with her. The second mistake was not telling her when he started making secret plans. And then as she ends her, uh, her, her angry railing at him, he says this. He says, as for myself... Be sure I shall never deny all you can say, your majesty. Your majesty, ooh, that's cold. He's probably been calling her babe all winter. But your majesty, something's changed in this relationship. Uh, never will the memory of Elissa stale for me. Elissa is her Phoenician name. While I can still remember my own life and the spirit rules my body. It's like, oh, don't worry, I, I still love you. As to the event, a few words. Do not think I meant to be deceitful and slip away. And then listen to this line. I never held the torches of a bridegroom, never entered upon the pact of marriage. Oh, man. He knows that all winter long she's been calling this marriage, but he hasn't. And yet he never told her he hasn't. He's been, he's been letting her go on under her self-delusion. Oh, this is, a, this is a marriage of love. This is a heart marriage. And he's never said, no, not to me. But now he does. Now he says, um, let's, let me clear up a few things. I, I never held the torches of a bridegroom. I never gave you a ring. I never actually vowed uh, I do. I never, I, I never entered upon the pact of marriage. This is the wrong time to say that. She has assumed he felt the same way as her. He knew how he felt, and yet he never uh, correct, corrected her misapprehension. And then he goes on. It just gets worse and worse. And this is, you know, this is a guy trying to get out of trouble. If fate permitted me to spend my days by my own lights and make the best of things according to my wishes, first of all, I should look after Troy. He said, if I could have, have things my own way, and now she's expecting him to say, if I could things, ha have things my own way, I'd stay with you. But he goes, you know, if I could have things my own way, well, first I probably would have stayed back in Troy. Well, that's not helpful. Uh, and the loved, the loved relics left me of my people. Priam's great hall should stand again. And he says, uh, but, you know, uh, be, apart from that, yeah, if I could have my own way, I'd stay with you. I sail for Italy, not of my own free will. The gods are making me go. Now, all that's true. He says, look, it's my, my destiny calls. But here's the problem. If that were so, he should never have gotten her involved. Because now in sailing away, which he could have done at any time if he hadn't gotten emotionally involved. Uh, uh, now in sailing away, he's going to destroy her, as we see in the rest of the story. They continue to make preparations. They load up the ships. They get ready to sail away. Nothing Dido says, no, no cries, no tears, no pleas, no desperate falling down and grabbing him by the legs. Nothing changes his mind because he's, he's, he realizes he has to obey the gods. He's got to follow them to his destiny. She can't make him stay. And now uh, um, after, uh, after a number of, uh, uh, of episodes where she cries out to her sister, Anna, what do I do? And her sister's like, I don't know. And Aeneas is loading the ship. And finally, by the end of the book, Aeneas and his men get on their ships and they start sailing away. Meanwhile, Dido, in complete despair, builds a funeral pyre, a giant funeral pyre, stacking up firewood, you know, very high, uh, and then climbs on top of it, lighting the wood, 
and then pulling her sword and stabbing herself, and in her, in her last breath calls out a curse on this man who's destroyed her. And she says, may my descendants and your descendants hate each other forever. And every, every person in Rome who read this would go, oh, that's why we had the Punic Wars with Hannibal. Because Hannibal, centuries later, is a descendant of Dido and the Carthaginians. So this is Virgil's poetic explanation, his mythological explanation for the, for the Punic Wars. It's the result of this mistake that their great ancestor Aeneas had made with Queen Dido. Queen Dido, as she's lying here, dying on the funeral pyre with her own sword piercing her breast and the flames licking up around her, is cursing this man who's destroyed her, who's broken her heart. May my descendants and your descendants be enemies forever. May, may there never be peace, never be reconciliation. And of course, the Romans, in their own experience, remember the, the, the Punic Wars. They destroyed Carthage after three major battles, Hannibal and the last one, leveled Carthage to the ground, plowed it with salt. Carthage was abandoned for centuries, or years anyway, until the Romans rebuilt it as a Roman city.